When sailing in the Mediterranean, you will almost certainly need to moor up stern two. This involves reversing the boat up to the quay and securing the boat with two stern lines with the anchor laid out in front. Alternatively, you might find that there are lazy lines. These are lines tied to the quay and attached to thicker lines under the water. Here you would secure the bow using the line rather than an anchor. When coming into harbour, give yourself plenty of time to prepare the boat. The helmsman should stay on the helm throughout the whole procedure, while the crew prepare the boat. Put out three fenders on either side. Bring the tender to the bow of the boat. Prepare two stern lines and attach to the stern cleats. Finally prepare the anchor, either for manual drop or using the electric windlass. Before commencing your mooring procedure, approach your chosen space bow first. Note the lie of other boats' anchors. Look for any lazy lines. Check the depth and look for any obstacles in the water. The helmsman and the crew member on the anchor should work out some hand signals to aid communication. Drop the anchor to stage one, just below the waterline. Give yourself as much distance from the quay as possible to start your final approach in reverse. You will want to start laying the anchor at least three boat lengths from the quay. You can't have too much chain out, but you can have too little. Skipper Mike Skeet talks us through the final approach. And go to stage one. The anchor needs to go one metre under the waterline. That's it, excellent. I've had the thumbs up from Amanda that we're at stage one. Wonderful. And we can now start to make our approach. The wind's coming from this side, so it's coming across the windward side of the boat. This is the first line to go on. As the wind increases, we increase our speed. If there's no wind and it's a completely flat car pond, we can do this whole manoeuvre in tick over reverse. Just looking over my shoulder, stern straight is the bow straight, the bow's lined up with the wall, We're taking a transit between the two points. Now I'm looking for about three boat lengths out. One boat, two, and then myself is going to be the third. Right, so up to the anchor, stage two please. Listening for the noise of the windlass, I can hear the anchors make contact with the sea floor. I'm keeping the stern lined up with this uh, electrical point here, and the bow is still in the transit with the fishing vessel in front. Okay, now we're about halfway down, let's bring the boat into neutral. Anchor's still being dropped, so it's just flowing gently back. When I'm about a quarter of the boat length from the wall, I'm going to stop the anchor. Okay, so stop the anchor there. If it's not enough and she bites early, I can get the person on the anchor to do a bit more. Ready to cover the throttle in case it doesn't bite. Just coming right up to the wall now, and there we go. Stop next to the wall, the line can be thrown onto the wall. She's not springing back forward too much because she's still in reverse. We can take the line through the ring, back onto the cleat, and we're ready to go. Once you have the lines doubled up, you may want to tighten the anchor chain a little. At Nissos, we prefer to lower the anchor in manual mode, using the clutch to control the speed of the drop. With strong crosswinds, you may want to approach the key a little bit faster, and the electric windlass may struggle to keep up. When leaving your mooring, start up the engine and put some revs on, keeping the engine in neutral. Prepare the windlass to raise the anchor. Release the downwind stern line first, then the upwind line. The weight of the anchor chain will start to pull you away from the quayside. Then instruct the crew member at the bow to start raising the anchor, keeping the engine in neutral. When the anchor is clear, you can engage gear and start moving away. If you think your anchor chain is crossed with another boat, then alert their skipper before you leave, so they can assist you. You can often tell if they are crossed by looking out from the bow at the angle of the chain. Should your chain be over theirs, then try and leave first. If under, then let them leave before you, if you can. 
If you get your anchor caught, try tying a rope to a forward cleat, passing it under the other boat's chain and pulling tight. Then tie the other end off to the cleat. Lower your anchor till it swings clear from the foul chain, then raise it again. Release the rope holding up the chain. The other boat will then need to wind in the slack on their chain. With lazy lines, the approach and preparation are the same as before, except that you do not use the anchor. The lines are generally run by taverna owners and they will usually come and give you a hand. When close, you will be passed a thin rope attached to the key. At this point, you should put the engine in neutral so as not to foul the prop and cut the line. Take the rope and walk to the bow, pulling up the thicker rope as you go. At the same time, attach the stern lines to the key. Keep pulling up the thicker line and attach to a forward cleat. To leave, release the stern lines and the weight of the lazy line will pull the boat away from the key. Untie the thick line from the bow and wait for it to sink before going into gear.